I want to welcome everyone present, especially our living discipleship group. It is truly awesome to have such an enthusiastic group as part of our community, and also those joining us online. Welcome. I'd like to uh, read from Yogananda's book of Prayer Demands, Whispers from Eternity. And this is a short one, but beautiful. It's demand to love God as all saints have loved him. O Heavenly Father, fill my heart daily with the prayers and love of some new saint who found thee in ages bygone. Fill my heart with the love of all saints who have ever loved and found thee. I chose that whisper on purpose because Yogananda once said, one moon shines more light than all the stars. One moon, like we were celebrating Shivaratri on Friday night, a special moonlight will be brighter than all the stars. Swami Kriyananda put that a different way. He said that the saints are the true custodians of religion, that the true saints are the ones that hold that divine light or that divine moon, and they share it in this world. It's like a, a superconscious sword that can cut through delusion, even the delusion that's used to interpret the scriptures. We need the living scripture of the saints. And the reason I chose that is because this is a holy week. This past week was a holy week, and we're moving into holy season with Easter in three weeks. Thursday was the Mahasamadhi of our guru, Paramahansa Yogananda. Friday was Shivaratri, just so happened to fall on that day. And Saturday was Sri Yukteswar's Mahasamadhi. So we had this holy trinity of saints here leading up to Sunday, the moon to the sun. Well, I must admit, I was nervous to give service today because it was our first time giving service here and Ramesha said, hey, Narayan, did you remember your first services for Los An Ananda Los Angeles and I, I kind of forgot and he reminded me of this <laughs> traumatic series of events that happened so first Sunday service I was not supposed to give the Sunday service I think Ram actually was supposed to give the service and for some reason he couldn't so I was like from, pulled from the bullpen and I had to give a talk extemporaneously I did my best through the grace of God and Guru then the second week I prepared, Vidura was very supportive and Durga were there at the time, I prepared as much as I could. You know, I read, I took notes, I had notes with me. Then Dharma Devi read the reading and I got up to share and I said, well, I did prepare this week, but I just realized I prepared for the wrong topic. <laughs> <laughs> I somehow got it mixed up. So I said, okay, this third week, I, I am, there's n nothing on earth can hold me. Rise, oh, my soul in freedom. So I, I had notes like this, you know, slipped into, I think it was Whispers from Eternity, and Dharma Devi and I came up, and I put it on the little minister's table like that. This is the third week. And I didn't realize it, but there was a little candle. <laughs> and I ignited my notes on fire, and I had absolutely no idea. I was pronoming to the altar, and Dharma Devi was frantically putting the fire out. <laughs> she put the fire out. But I think it was Divine Mother's way of telling me to stop with the, the notes. Don't go off book, right? That's that the saints are the true custodians of religion. They're holding that light. They're holding that moon. They're holding God's presence. And they're telling us 
When we need you, you descend. We have called out for God. God has come at this time. A great avatar has come. A great line of avatars have come. What else are we waiting for? Are we waiting for some uh, sign from God? Well, those happen too. I had an incredible experience on Friday, Shiva Ratri. I, our dear friend Michael is part of the Living Discipleship Group, so Dharma Devi and I have been uh, filling orders for crystal clarity. You know, order comes in, order goes out for whispers from eternity, the new path, autobiography, whatever it may be. So I had some small orders, and then I had one big order of uh, three big cases of autobiography of a yogi. And Dharma Devi and I were kind of doing a, a bunch of different things on Friday. And so finally, I got to the post office in the afternoon. And I'm walking into the post office, and I see this man. And I said, hello, good sir. This was a beautiful day, and I wanted to share enthusiasm with him. And he said, hello. And I walked in. I dropped off the small packages. I came back out. And then he was in the parking lot. We were outside. This is in North San Juan, the North San Juan post office, those of you that know it. And he, he looked at me. He said, hey, hey, uh, is that your car? Are you from Ananda? Dharma Devi and I, our license plate says Kriya. <laughs> so he deduced that we were from Ananda. I said, yes, I, I am a part of Ananda. He said, you know, I've been, I just read Autobiography of a Yogi. It touched me to the core of my being. He said, I, I want to learn Kriya Yoga. Can you help me? And I said, actually, can you help me? <laughs> I've got three cases of Autobiography of a Yogi <laughs> in the trunk. Can you help me bring him into the post office? He's like, oh my god, I got chills. And we both did, but he helped me carry them in. And this great soul, he wants to learn Kriya. He wants to take up Karma Yoga. And that, the saints are the true custodians of religion. It's not us, we're acting as channels. And the more that we say yes to that light, the more that we embrace it, the more that we love it, the more that we serve it, the more that we dive into it, the more God's love and energy can flow through us. How is this all related to the topic? Dogmatism versus common sense. It has everything to do with it. Because Swami wrote in one of his books, The Law of Dogmatic Proliferation, I think he called it an out of the labyrinth. He said the less you actually understand and can experience and prove something, the more you dogmatically declare it. <laughs> like that woman that said to Yogananda, have you been saved by the blood? And Yogananda said, produce a court. <laughs> he, he, like these things that absolutely make no sense, <laughs> he responded with an absurd response because <laughs> that's not how you're saved. You're not literally saved by the blood. What does the blood mean? The, the coursing current of prana. What does Sri Yukteswar say in that chant? Pranayam be thy religion. Pranayam will give thee salvation. The yogis know this, that it's returning the life force to its source in God. So it's important for us <coughs> to understand that we cannot find God through dogma. We, through dogmatism. Dogmatism is the antithesis of truth, right? It's the death of true understanding. That's why Christ and all the great ones are saying, well, just use your God-given common sense. Does it jive with your experience of life? And the saints are saying, don't believe, don't believe what I say. Test it. Try it for yourself. This is the beauty of Kriya Yoga and the path of discipleship and meditation, that it's you taking it up 
There's no one uh, telling you what it is. You have to experience God for yourself. That's why the direct perception of God, that's what the saints have, and that's why they're the custodians of religion. Not religion, religionality, uh, churchianity, they're the custodians of the spirit of God. And how do we, how do we tune into their spirit? How do we become a saint? Because it's not, let's not be mistaken, like Swamiji said, it's not idol worship, right? We have these pictures, we have idols, we have niches. It's ideal worship. Right? It's like Christ is representing that ideal of strength of heart, the compassion that he could say his greatest miracle, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. That is strength of heart. That Babaji represents that ideal of, O oh, thou king of the infinite. Lahiri represents that ideal that you, you can be a balanced householder. You can live in the world and be not of it and have God within your heart. And Sri Yukteswar, that ideal of Rome in this world as a lion of self-control. See that the frogs of weakness don't kick you around. And Master is saying the time for knowing God has come. I want to offer an experiential one minute together. Swami, towards the end of his life, right before he wrote this letter on, uh, around, it was Easter time, and he wrote a letter about Easter and Yogananda's picture, The Last Smile. I'm going to see if we can bring up the last smile. And you can look at this photo and what Samami says about it. So take this as a one-minute visualization, meditation, as you feel so inspired. This is an excerpt from Swami Kriyananda's, one of his last letters. Dear ones, I wish I could bless each and every one of you with a happy Easter. Easter is a time symbolizing the eventual resurrection of our little individual selves into the one infinite self. I suggest that this time particularly that you study and meditate on the photograph of Master titled The Last Smile and consider this amazing fact. He knew that in just a few moments he would be leaving his physical body forever. There is no thought of self in his eyes, of personal regret, of sorrow, clearly visible in his eyes and in his facial expression is his unconditional love for all mankind, his readiness to return again and again, as he put it, as long as one stray brother sits weeping by the wayside. Such love for ego-centered humanity is not even conceivable. There's the whole letter which we can share with you, but I found this to be so powerful and inspiring leading up to Easter because we have this three-week period before Easter, the resurrection of our soul. But the final thought that I'd like to leave us with is what if our destiny is to be a self-realized saint? What if our destiny is to be one of those moons? Like Yogananda said, I see my Kriya yogis as little sparks of light. And what if those lights begin to come together in community like here, and they form cities of light. This light will encircle the planet. This is why Yogananda was so enthusiastic about communities where people can come together, 
commune with God, feel God's presence, and share him, and integrate him, and actualize him in their daily life. So I want to close with this story. It's how a, the saint converted a thief. There was an, uh, a saint in ancient India known as Tulsidas, and he was a very holy and pious saint. And his followers uh, loved him and revered him for his intense devotion to Lord Rama. And they, in their adoration and love of him, they bought him many gold utensils for the temple where he wor worshipped Lord Rama. And as he was meditating, Tulsi Das, he noticed that in, way in the reservoir of his subconscious, he had this little slight fear about those gold utensils being stolen. And his fear was not unfounded because there was a thief that had spied all of these gold utensils and greedily was plotting to steal them. And so every night for a week, for seven days, this thief, he knew that Tulsi Das would meditate under the bower of this certain tree with these fragrant uh, roses around him. It was about 100 yards from the, the temple. And every night this thief went to go and steal those utensils, there was the Lord Rama as a guard with his bow and arrow and menacingly protecting the gold utensils. And so the thief, finally, he had to change his tactic. So he dressed up as a gentleman and he went and met Tulsi Das. And he said, oh, revered Tulsi Das, I, I know that you leave the temple open at night so that people can meditate and feel the divine vibrations. But I can't get in. There's your sentry as Lord Rama is guarding it menacingly. I can't get past. And Tulsi Das, with, with tears in his eyes, he said, you really saw Lord Rama? Oh, and he's there guarding? Oh, I'm so sorry. Let me see what I can do. And so Tulsi Das went into meditation, and he prayed to Lord Rama. He said, Lord Rama, I'm, so, I'm sorry that I've caused you this distress of being the guard of my temple. Take away these golden utensils from me. And Rama appeared to him. And just with a sweet smile and nod, he knew that his prayer was answered. And so that night, the gentleman, who was really the thief, plotted and he snuck into the temple and he stole as many gold utensils as he could. He got almost everything. He missed only a few. And he put them in a gunny sack and he started running from the temple. But he, as he was running, he hit a can and that noise, that rattle, sparked off a dog barking and then this stray dog started chasing him and he was running faster and faster and this dog was coming after him howling, and, all, and that stirred Tulsi Das from his meditation. He heard this gunny sack shaking, clank, clanking with the gold utensils, this dog barking and howling. And so Tulsi Das got up, he calmly went into the temple, and he said, oh, my Lord, I asked you to take all of the utensils. There are still a few here. So he wrapped up those last few in his own little shawl, and then he ran off. And with his saintly speed, he overtook the thief, who at this time he just fell at Tulsi Das's feet. And he said, oh, beloved Tulsi Das, I'm, I, I beg your pardon. Please do not turn me over to the police. I'm so sorry for taking your gold utensils. And he said, oh, my beloved son, I'm not here to turn you into the police. I've, only come because you forgot a few of them here. <laughs> and the thief was so overwhelmed with Tulsi Das's non-attachment, his forgiveness, his love, that he said, I'm a thief. 
But here today, you have stolen my heart. You've stolen my soul. I, want, I was a thief of material things. Now, will you take me as your disciple and teach me to be a thief of hearts like you? And so Tulsidas picked up this thief who now became a saint, and they went to the temple and loved God together. These great ones have come. Let us let them steal into our hearts. And we too, in their name, in their word, in their vibration, can be one of the moons, can be one of the saints that is the custodian of self-realization. God bless you. Stop blazing, you'll find it amazing How the world can drag on just as before If you're seeking freedom in a marble mansion Oh, if you're seeking freedom, you won't find it there For even when it's sunny Showcase your face lined with care. And if you're seeking freedom on a throne of power, oh, if you're seeking freedom, you won't find it there. For though men all obey you, what if they betray you? Tense you'll be and waiting for foes. Sunlight on your shoulders, the wind in your hair. For there's no one can hold you, boss about or mold you. Once your heart is free, you'll be king everywhere. For there's no one can hold you, boss about or mold you. Once your heart is free, you'll be king everywhere. unto the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the Lord who made the heavens and the earth. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. 
He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is the thy shade upon thy right hand. The sun shall not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy God. Oh